before getting into how Tesla just totally blew up the lithium ion market when they launched the Gigafactory, like you were saying, you know, what was, what did you actually work on at Tesla? Could you give us like a little, uh, a micro background there? Yeah, absolutely. So I was one of the managers of the battery materials supply. And so my team was responsible for going out and, you know, securing the supply of the raw materials used to make the battery cells themselves. And if you want more detail than that, you'll get it at Tesla Battery Day. <laughs> awesome. And so, so going back to this slide here, you know, what fascinated me about Tesla was this, they were really the first people to say, okay, there's a bunch of these batteries and laptops that have really become commercialized in smartphones, the iPhone. Um, but can we really string 4,000 of these together and power a car? That was sort of like an insane proposition. And then they literally needed more batteries than existed in the world. And that's why they had to build this gigafactory. So um, maybe you could take it from there because I feel like that, like you said, was just a truly inflection moment. And now it's sort of taken for granted that all these mega factories are being built. But at the time, the Gigafactory was insane. It was like a pile of dirt in the Nevada desert. Everyone thought Tesla was crazy for putting in a couple billion in CapEx to build this. Now it's turned into one of their strategic advantages is that vertical integration to lock up that supply of, of batteries. I mean, this is why I get blue in the face telling people Tesla's not a car company. Tesla's a battery company. It just happens to make cars. And... <laughs> It's because if you look at electric vehicles on a worldwide basis, regardless of who the producer is, your battery costs are going to be anywhere from 25 to 40% of the bill of materials to build your electric vehicle. There's nothing else that gets close in terms of the bill of materials for, for making a car. And so six years ago, when the Gigafactory decision was made, I wasn't at the company. But what I'm assuming went through the minds of the people making this decision was this is the biggest portion of our bill of materials. It's also the component that we are going to run out of in the world. There is no way that there are going to be enough battery cells in the world to keep up with the demand that we are seeing from our consumers. And so that's why that decision was made. And then, like you said, ever since then, when, when the Tesla Gigafactory was announced, the only other major plants were the plants that are on this page. So the CATL plant, the Panasonic plant, the LG Chem plant. And now the game is completely different. Now there are 143 tracked mega factories by Benchmark Minerals, wow. encompassing 2.5 terawatt hours of battery production worldwide. This is insane. And, and this is all, you, you think this has really been catalyzed by that gigafactory and the success? Like, would you say these lithium ion me mega factories are pretty much all for vehicles, you know, trucks, vans, cars? So these lithium ion, the biggest, these lithium ion battery factories were all catalyzed by, Tesla, by the Tesla gigafactory announcement. But not every single one of these lithium ion battery cells is going to be used for vehicles. So Elon like has publicly stated on multiple earnings calls and multiple events that he expects the energy business to be as big as the vehicle business one day. And utilities around the world are looking at solar plus storage, solar plus wind, you know, en energy generation and en paired with batteries as storage assets as a future business model for them. There has to be enough lithium ion capacity for those applications as well. Unfortunately, however, what we're seeing, and this is on page six, is given just how great the demand is for consumer electric vehicles, that there's going to be a little bit of a mismatch in what's available. So what we see over here is our projection from Benchmark up to 2030 of how many electric vehicles are going to be on the roads, as well as what is the gigawatt hour consumption of those electric vehicles. And this encompasses everything, two wheelers, three wheelers, um, you know, regular vehicles that you and I would drive, like a Model 3, Cybertrucks, buses. And what it stacks okay. up to is about 1.7 terawatt hours will be used for vehicles. And, and how many vehicles assume, is that assuming? So if you look at the little bubbles over here, it's 12.7 million in China, 7.5 million in Europe, 5.5 million in North America, and the rest of the world will have about 5.5 million. Wow. So that would be about that's looking like what 30 to 40 million vehicles a year and that's enough battery capacity for about that much which would be about yeah. half of vehicle sales today now wow. keep in mind there's going to be a, a significant amount of differentiation in terms of what's the kilowatt hour per vehicle in each of these geographies and by totally. application as well so the chinese consumer doesn't want what the american consumer want a jurisdiction that is buying buses in europe and a jurisdiction that's buying buses in brazil want two different things Totally. But the main point out of this is going back to your question on, you know, 
will these batteries all be used for electric vehicles? 1.7 terawatt hours are being used for electric vehicles if we assume that all of these projections for vehicles are going to be true. Mm -hmm. Now, we just talked earlier about how there's approximately 2.5 terawatt hours of battery factories coming up now over the next decade. Yeah. So, and I do I do want to pick a bone on this because I think your Tesla estimates are too low because you have them at 148 gigawatt hours by 2030. And Elon mm -hmm. Musk has said he wants to do two terawatt hours potentially or sort of dropping these hints of the Terra factory terawatt hours. So yeah. I don't know. My personal opinion of this chart is like if when after battery day when Tesla announces their thing, this Tesla could literally be triple that leader of CATL by 2030 yeah. all depends hey, on how fast they could ramp. But that's kind of my personal theory is that's the breakthrough of battery day to kind of frame why this is such a big deal for Tesla and so fascinating because this is the whole supply and these numbers that Elon is throwing out are like mind boggling, you know, it would like it would dwarf anything on this chart, right? I don't disagree at all. Let me just be clear that what's on here is based on what has been announced so far. This chart will change over time. Yeah. Right? So gotcha. And, and if it changes, I mean, that just reinforces the point on what we're talking about over here is that 1.7 terawatt hours number is just going to keep going up. Totally. So let's just say that this is static right now, right? About 80 gigawatt hours, 10 years from now, will be consumer electronics, cell phones and batteries and all that, because that's just kind of growing at GDP. Wow. It's almost nothing compared to electric vehicles. It's crazy. But at the same time, you know, you've got, you know, if you add the consumer electronics onto that, what you have left is just 700 gigawatt hours used for energy storage versus oh. the 1.7 that's being used for electric, for electric vehicles. I mean, that's a little concerning right there because we want the business to be as big as the vehicle business and there's only 40% of the battery capacity left for that business. And the gotcha. business model has to change. And see, I, I, to me, it wasn't making sense for a second. So I was like, oh, well, we have enough to build all the cars. But that point you're making is very important, which is what Tesla's been touting. I think not enough not a people are realizing, you know, the mega pack, what they're doing to stabilize the grid. You're saying that could be an equal amount of terawatt hours needed. I mean, Elon Musk has said that business could be just as big. So that's really where the supply constraint comes in. It's like, well, if we're going to do vehicles and the grid, then there's just nowhere near enough battery capacity, even with this, all these planned factories. It's not just Elon. I mean, just look at the, the trend in the utilities market right now. There is, in North America, a coal plant is going out of business once every 14 days. Love it. Right? I love it too, but we are going to have to replace that generation asset. Totally. And something like solar and wind coupled with battery storage is likely the solution that will emerge from a pure LCOE basis. LCOE is levelized cost of, of energy. Mm -hmm. So from a pure LCOE basis, we're gonna need more batteries than we've, what we've had left if we were to take out what's being used for electric vehicles and take out what's being used for consumer electronics on this chart.